Approximately 250 miles southwest on the bottom of New York's Oneida Lake is another community hotspot. The remains of what's known locally as the Sand Barge rest crumbled in 18 feet of water off Phillips Point. Fragments of what was once a wooden barge, cut short from its journey to Oswego with a load of sand, is now waterlogged, encapsulated with zebra mussels and attracting a variety of fish. Local tournament angler Captain Ted Dobbs directed Kim and Danny to this wreck midsummer 2009, and the venture didn't disappoint. What you got there, Ted? That would be, feels like a better fish. But we'll see. It's acting like a better fish. Yeah, well, it didn't bite like a like the rest of them. Ooh, that's a nice smallmouth. That's for sure. Nice smallmouth. Good job. There we go. Good job. Smallmouth bass are drawn to sunken wreckage like a magnet, and so is the food they eat. But first, to fish a sunken wreck, you need to find a sunken wreck. And with modern day electronics with GPS and side scanning capabilities, it's not too difficult to pinpoint the structure. Look at all that stuff. Now right there, fish. That's a fish, that's a fish right there. That is amazing. Now we're coming up, it's on the right. See how it is on the right there? Yep. So what I can do is come up here with my cursor I go over here and then I can zoom in, take a better look at the structure and look to see if there's fish on it. See those, wow. little, those could be fish right there. Yep. And then I'm gonna set a, a marker for it. Now I've got a waypoint created for right on that key spot. spot. You actually put the cursor over to the structure and waypoint That's it. That's right. And speaking of waypoints, if you do some research online, you'll find there's a lot of information in regard to sunken vessels available. And in addition to their history, they include waypoints as well. Most fishermen are shy about sharing waypoints. However, fish holding wrecks are also popular with scuba divers. So the information is published and out there if you search for it. Once you've located a sunken wreck, it's best to drop buoy markers at both ends of the structure. This will help you keep your bearings while fishing as well as provide a visual topside as to how the wreck rests on the bottom. Further surveillance with an AquaView camera will give you a more comprehensive assessment of the structure and help you establish what species are present and how they're positioned on it. We just gotta find the sweet spot. I'm sure there's a sweet spot that's got a big old small moth or two on it. There we go. Get out of that wreck. Jump, jump. It's a little, little better. It's a little better. I better get the net ready for you there. Look at them spit out the minnows. Look at the minnows in the water. That's the size they're... Oh, I just missed one. <laughs> the size of the I'll base they're feeding right there. Great. When considering the amount of hard wooden structure to get hung up on, the most proficient presentation on sunken wrecks is with a standard drop shot rig. With this rig, the hook is tied to suspend the lure freely above the weight. The weight is what comes in contact with the structure and is much less likely to hang up than a hook dragging the bottom. Kim shares with us his Seaguar system for drop shotting. The system I currently use for drop shotting is without doubt the best available for finesse fishing. I begin by spooling up with a main line of 20 pound Seaguar flash green smackdown braid. Smackdown braid casts beautifully and has no stretch, making it extremely sensitive. Furthermore, on slack line, I rely on high-vis flash green to help me visibly detect the subtle strikes. Then, with a double uni knot, I typically attach about eight feet of 10-pound Seaguar gold label fluorocarbon leader. However, when considering the abrasive substrate encapsulated with razor sharp zebra mussels, I turn to the superior abrasion resistance of Seaguar Abrasex fluorocarbon. Oh, that was one. I know there's, there's, <laughs> that was they are one. sitting right here. We got yeah, them pinpointed. Are. The birds do too. There you go. There you it go. Came back. They always do. Be big.
Ooh. Yeah, oh, that's a better one. Go. That's there a better one. Go. That's more like it. <laughs> Way to go, Dad. Enjoy every second yeah, of exactly. what I'm doing. <laughs> Oh, gosh, I just missed one. <laughs> What's the problem? We need a double. We're supposed to be yeah, no. getting doubles here. That's a decent fish. Come on. They get that little old splinter in them. There, there we nice. go. That's a good fish. Very good, Pat. Nice. Thank you. Good net job. Much better than myself. <laughs> Professional yeah, we're amateur. Not, we're not done yet. <laughs> good job. There's mine. All right. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, jump. This is great. Uh, this is great. Man, there's a lot of them here. And I a think. A little better. Beauty. Super finesse worm, four inch. Good job. Let's let them go. We actually made two dives on this barge. However, they were a few weeks apart. On our first dive, we were greeted by excellent visibility, yet we weren't as lucky on the second. Oneida Lake had experienced an algae bloom where the water clarity was diminished significantly throughout the entire water column. With that said, I have one noteworthy observation to share. We documented that in the clearer water, the small mouths were more spread apart and suspended over the barge. Yet, in the dingy water, they were noticeably more closely grouped and holding tighter to the wreckage. Food for thought. We hope you're learning from the one-of-a-kind underwater viewpoint of Hook and Look. 